Hello and welcome again to our morning devotion insight. This morning I want to share with you worship matters. Uh, worship matters. Uh, Psalm 34 verse 9, uh, the message Bible says this, Worship God if you want the best. Worship opens doors to all His goodness. Uh, it says, Worship God if you want the best. Worship opens doors to all His goodness. You know, uh, when we want to worship God, we talk about coming to church to worship. Then we talk about our own personal life where we also choose to worship God. But worship also, uh, there are so many dynamics. There are so many things that we can learn. You know, some thought that worship is just about music, which is not. Hmm, which is not. Uh, music will enhance, music will help. But worship is more than that. And uh, there are five reasons why we worship, and I just want to share briefly with you. It says, firstly, is that God is worthy of praise and worship. Huh? God is worthy of praise and worship. God is worthy because He's the creator of the universe. Huh? He created the fish in the sea. He created the birds in the air. You know, He hung the stars in the sky, and He designed every strand of DNA in our body. So because, and also most important is that because He's the Savior of the world, He came, He loved us, He saved us. So He is worthy, God is worthy and of our worship and He deserves all praise and glory for who He is. For who He is. You know, sometimes we, we don't worship God because God, you gave me this or because God, you provided this. We thank God for all these things. But because of who he is. You know, Sandy Patty sang a song. It says, uh, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Uh, because of who you are. That's why we worship God, because of who he is. Uh, and uh, not because of what he has done in our lives. He has, what he has done in our lives are just, you know, the uh, secondary thing. But the primary thing is that we worship because of who he is. Uh, so worship uh, is because of we, we we worship God because He's worthy of our praise. In Revelation chapter five verse twelve says, "In a loud voice they sang, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise." You know, when I read the book of Revelation, it gets me excited because it's like you know the throne room is like you know heaven making so much of sound, and it says, "And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the sea and on the sea." and all that's them and, and all that's them singing to him who sits on the throne be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever just reading this verse already makes you so excited to say god i praise you because of who you are i praise god because god is worthy of praise huh? that's firstly secondly is that worship helps us fulfill our purpose Worship helps us fulfill our purpose. You know, in Matthew 22, verse 37 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. You and I were made to worship. You and I were made to worship. You know, that's why worship should become so important in your life and in my life. You know, sometimes we think we become a Christian and then we become a worshipper. So sorry to say, you know, even if you are not a Christian, even if you are a non-believer, even whoever you meet on the street, you know, they will be a worshipper of something, of someone, of some, you know, whatever. Some people say, I'm a free thinker, I don't worship anything. But nevertheless, you know, you still worship the very fact that somehow you are just having some form of worship in whatever manner that we thought that maybe I'm not a worshipper. You know, but the truth is, every one of us is made to worship. And we were worshipping long before we place our faith in Jesus Christ. In fact, there is something inside, inside of us that longs for and searches for something of meaning and significance to give what? To give ourselves to. So, worship helps us fulfill our purpose. Why? Everybody is worshipping and everybody is building their life around someone or something. Especially nowadays. Huh? You are going to worship someone or something with your life because that's the way we were made. Some people, they worship their job. Some people, they worship their family. Some people, they worship their children. Huh? Some people, they worship celebrities. Some people, they worship whatever they, they feel that that's gives them the satisfaction. So our lives were given a full to given to fulfill a destiny to worship him. 
And when we abandon God, we, we abandon our destiny and instantly our lives become what? About something less than God Himself. If we don't worship God, uh, that we, we won't fulfill our purpose. We won't fulfill our destiny. We, we were made to worship. Our purpose in life is to worship God. You know, so worship matters. Not only because you and I are a worshiper, but because you and I were created to be in relationship with our Creator and Redeemer and worship Him uh, and Him alone. Amen. So thirdly, it said, there is a war over your worship. Matthew chapter 4, verse 8 to 10 says, Again, the devil took him to a very high place and the hymn is Jesus. Uh, high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you. He said, if you will bow down and worship me, Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. You know, listen, you need to know this. Remember when Jesus went into the wilderness after his baptism, what happened? He fasted and then he was tested. Huh? For 40 days and 40 nights, he was fasting and then he was tested. The last temptation reads this one. It says, again, the devil took him. Huh? Took him to a high place, showed him, you know what, I'll give you everything, everything, everything. Look, 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 I'll give you everything if you will bow down and worship me. So here we see Satan has some domain or power over this earth. He doesn't have complete control, but he has some influence. So he say, you know, I will give you control over this. You know, Satan was what? Was competing for Jesus' worship. He wants Jesus to worship him. Huh? So, there is a war over our worship. He, Satan wants us to worship the things that he made, the things that he, he wants to, uh, uh, you know, draw us away from worshipping the Lord Jesus Christ. So, if there is a battle, a spiritual battle over worship huh? and over Jesus' worship, you and I better know that there is one over yours too. Uh, every word, every action Every decision is a choice to worship God or something else or someone else. Huh? So here, we, we are reminded what and who you worship makes a difference in your life in heaven. Satan's greatest thing isn't that he gets us to run away from God, but to distract our attention and allegiance, neutralizing our voice from the chorus of heaven praising and worshipping God. So let us remember this one thing. There's a war over your worship over my worship and the sooner we realize it the more we can guard against it and the more important our worship uh, will become to each of us fourthly is that we become who we worship now uh, we become who we worship you know in fact this uh, poet ralph emerson Waldo's uh hit the nail on this when he says the gods we worship write their names on our faces be sure of that and a man will worship something have no doubt about that either he may think that his tribute is paid in the secret, dark recesses of his heart, but it will come out. That which dominates will determine his life and his character. Therefore, it behooves us to be careful what we worship, for we are worshipping what we are becoming. Huh? So, in Psalm 115 verse 1 says, Those who make them, referring to the making of idols, will be like them, and so will all who trust in them. So, what you worship, you become. If you get the part, God part wrong, you get the whole you, ourself part wrong. If you get the object of your worship wrong, you will get your heart wrong. If you get the wrong God, it's very possible that you can become blind and deaf to God's voice and His movement in your life, in my life. So at that moment, you and I are dead spiritually. Huh? So that's why it says, you become, you know, you become who you worship. You become, money state, you become money, status, material, belongings, and whatever it is which matters most to you. If you are worshipping that, then we become like that. And whatever you value the most costumes you, it consumes you in the end. Whatever you value the most, it consumes you the end, to the end. And whatever consumes you like a fire, it forges you and conforms you and I. And whatever conforms you and I, determines our destiny. So remember, we become who we worship. Huh? Then lastly, worship is fuel for the soul. 
Uh, six things that worship does, it brings new perspective. It increases our desire to obey God. Worship will help us to see God's sovereignty, to see God is in control. It gives us physical, emotional, and spiritual rest when we worship God. And how many of us, you know, when we worship God, we feel rested in our soul. Worship gives us power, goes without a doubt, you know, and it creates a greater hunger in us for God. So, let us this morning remember that, you know, there are five things that worship matters. Firstly, God is worthy huh, of our praise and worship. Worship helps us fulfill our destiny or will fulfill our purpose. Thirdly, is there is a war over your worship, my worship. So, please, guard it well. And fourth is that we become who we worship. Huh? And fifth is worship is fuel for our soul. It gives us strength. It, re it, it energizes us. Huh? So, let's just worship God and Him alone because he deserves all praise and worship. You have a great day. You have a worshipful day. In Jesus' name, amen.